G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. With me today is Linacorp because we are casting the 3v3 Pro League spawning in on the southeast side of the map. We've got Beastie Cutie on the Chinese. In the pocket position, we've got his ally Recon who is playing the English Strabora. And down towards the south, the flank, the Muslim playing the Holy Roman Empire. Linacorp, who's on the opposite side of the map? We will have Vortex in the pocket position playing as the Holy Roman Empire in purple. To the right of him is Lucifron handling the Chinese in teal. And to the left, we will have the Mista in the flank position as the Abbasid Sultanate in green. The first thing that I noted as you were introducing the base of the Muslim is that he is going to take the further away forest here, but I love this move from him. He's going to have that forest spawn right next to that gold mine. So this way, that one prelate can inspire both the lumberjacks and the gold miners. It's a very clever touch for the Muslim. He could have gone for a forest right next to his TC, ah. but in the long run, this is going to be a lot more efficient. Yeah, at first I was wondering what you were talking about. I'm like, I was trying to find the, the forest. And I'm like... Where is the... F what forest is he talking about? And then it all made sense. But uh, yeah, a little bit of long distance uh, prelating uh, to open it up with. But uh, obviously this map we're playing on is Danube River. And typically on Danube River, you would see one civilization in particular, the Delhi Sultanate. And we don't actually see that today. We instead see the Abbasid Dynasty and the English. That's a bit weird, isn't it, Ludicor? It's a little weird indeed. The English can put up a lot of early pressure and we have seen it from time to time that teams are just trying to deny the fishing geek of the opponent early game and English is a great civilization to do that. You got the longbows out, you got the towers working nicely and behind that it's not like you have a terrible economy either. You can go up to Castle to King's Palace so you will most likely have two town centers worth of boom as well. Late game you have the enclosures on your farms so you also have a great late game economy. You have the farming eco going for you in case you get pushed off from the water so there's a lot to love about the English here. As you said, though, it's a little surprising that you are seeing the Delhi missing out completely because one thing that the Delhi gives you is safety to your fishing depot in Dark Age. And that's pretty important because you could see towers crawling up from your opponent anytime in this game trying to deny the fishing eco. Yeah, well, speaking of denying eco, take a look at over on the Mister's crossing up towards the north here. Instead of building the walls all the way up, he's only just half built them. And obviously that's going to prevent the pathing of any enemies through there. But very interestingly, it only takes, you know, a quarter, a half of the amount of time to do it. Uh, very interesting strategy. I've, been, I've not seen anybody do this before. Have you seen anyone do this before? Not like uh, the Mister does it. Sometimes you see this being done just so that you deny the incoming enemy units from killing your villager. But usually when you do this, you already see the enemy units coming in and you're like, okay, yeah. I need to finish this wall before he gets to the other side and kills my villager. But preemptively like that, it's a little surprising. And you see that he's also doing something unique with the Abbasid Dynasty. This is the first time I'm seeing this build on this map, at least in a 3v3 setting. Two docks for the Abbasids. Obviously, this count on that helps a lot. And it looks like he's able to afford to produce fishing ships consistently on both of those. That's going to skyrocket his food eco really fast. Yeah, I'm curious how he's going to be able to use this to capitalize on the potential mid-game. Because one of the things that I always talk about when you're playing into a heavy food economy like you do when you're going with, with these early fishing or early dock openings is that you've got to be using that food in a meaningful way. Are you thinking about going up to the third age? Are you thinking about dropping down an extra four town centers? You know, th there is unlimited ways that you can potentially go for it. But I, I guess that's really the crux of... of sort of the assessment is what is the best way for him to use that now keep in mind he's already playing the abbasid dynasty and there's a good chance he's going to have uh going will go up with the economic wing which will give him fresh foodstuffs that'll reduce the cost of his villages so it's not like he's going to need a lot of food so i wouldn't be surprised to see him actually go for a fast castle and then potentially into men at arms we've seen him do that many times before uh we saw him do that in genesis actually where he went for a fast castle into men at arms and mass springles but uh, obviously springles nerfed now looking at the base of the muslim you just gotta love how many sheep he has to work with it is most likely that his teammates donated all those sheep to him this is pretty common when you have the other two players fishing you can just send all the sheep to the holy roman emperor player that's not fishing at that very moment as you see the muslim is coming up with the walls on the left side so far little aggression is put up on the docks though so everybody is nice and safe with their fish yeah now interestingly he's got quite a lot of uh uh, I was going to say quite a lot of villagers on uh, on wood, uh, but then I just realized he's actually got, uh, he's he's got a dock up himself, Lidicor. 
Uh, so he's got six. Yeah, it's a little surprising. Yeah, it, it's very hard to see because I it, it, it looks like it's a gold mine on my minimap, but it's uh it's not. It's not. It is his dock. But uh, yeah, it seems like every single player is actually fishing uh, on this map. So no real surprises. Uh, you know, players definitely looking to take advantage of the water. Um, but uh, yeah, you can. I'm curious to see from Beastie's perspective. Look at this amount of fishing boats he's got out. He's got ten fishing boats out from here. We are really seeing a boom off today, aren't we? Exactly. The surprising thing here is that in earlier rounds, you could see the Holy Roman Empire players basically doing no fishing here. And the idea was that they just get the sheep, get the Akin Chapel for them, and they still have a good land eco. Yeah. But in the long run, it's probably better that you fish as well, because it's not like you're getting harassed. I think the major reason why all of the players are fishing is because there is no Delhi player. So there is nothing that can hurt your fishing eco in Dark Age, and it pays off so fast that even just a small investment is something that you can justify immediately. Yeah, I think that's the big thing is the fact that it just pays off so fast is is really what makes it so attractive. And to be honest, when I think about it, I'm like, it kind of needs to be uh, maybe nerfed a little bit. It like, I don't know, man. I just, I feel like fishing is so strong. If you don't fish, it's like pretty much game over. Uh, so yeah, it's something to be really cognizant of. If, if there are developers watching this, uh, you know, put it up on the whiteboard, just put a little like question mark next to it is fishing too strong like question mark question mark 10 p.m or like 10 a.m on tuesday that's when you guys discuss that have a beat have a meeting about that because I, I feel like fishing is a little bit too strong with a core i think the biggest thing is that you can mass so many fishing ships here you see that in dark age feudal age you already have 10 plus fishing ships for most players if you could slow down the production of the fishing ships a tiny bit mm. that would obviously slower or like make it slower Good call. All right. Well, you guys heard it here first. Patch notes. Next patch notes will say fishing boats, 25 seconds train time increased to 35 seconds. There you go, Lytical. We are balance patching at, on the fly. On the fly. I feel like any RTS game that you take a look at has 1 million balance patchers. They're usually called <laughs> players. <laughs> and everybody and knows exactly how they need to patch the game. And, and then whatever it is that you lost to in your last game, that's what needs to be patched the most. <laughs> I just exactly. I lost to an Abyssid player. That Civ is busted. We got to nerf it out the wazoo. Uh, but uh, speaking of nerfing out the wazoo, longbows in the middle of the map are beginning to apply pressure towards the Mister's fishing boats. He's not having a particularly good time with these. Indeed, and that's the power that you're getting from the English here. Because you're only you're the only player on the battlefield with any kind of army, so even just a handful of longbowmen can do a lot of damage. And the real advantage on the longbows is that they have seven range, which means they outrange any feudal age combat ships. So even if you make a galley, you can't kill them from the shoreline, and that's just so frustrating when they harass your fishing eco like that. Yeah, this is really annoying. I'm I'm just watching it. Well, was that vortex reaching the castle age just then? I, we just saw a very quick castle. That's an eight minute castle age. The Muslim coming in right behind him. Eight minutes and ten seconds. Right behind him, they are looking to catch a, capture these prelate or these uh these relics. First one's getting picked up already for Vortex. Uh, he's looking to bring those ones in. Second one also coming in for him as well, just to the south of his base. So while we we've got this uh this attack coming on the front line at the same time, players are thinking about their economy. Uh, I'm curious to see where De Muslim is at. He's picking up one relic. I see. Do you see the second one for him yet? Oh, there's the second prelate. What I'm also seeing though is that Vortex is really leveraging that fishing eco because we have seen some crazy fast imperials from him. Have you seen a sub 10 minute fast imperial from Vortex? Because you will in the next couple of seconds. Oh really? Uh, no, I, ha I haven't actually seen it. No, but uh, that, that excites me greatly. I'm looking at his economy right now. It doesn't, uh, I can't imagine. It. Oh my, oh my God, it's already up. Look at that Palace of Swabia. It's going up right now. God damn. How does the man do? <laughs> Holy lord. That's a, <laughs> that is a nine minute 20 fast Imperial. That is, all right, that's fast. Uh, I feel like you got to bring out a new word for that. You can't even call that a fast Imperial. That's like a, that's like a super fast Imperial. <laughs> What the heck are you doing, Vortex? Jeez. Oh, he's speedrunning him. Now, looking at Beastie, it looks like he wanted to send a villager forward to make a dog. But one thing that you have to be considerate of on this map is that you have a bunch of wolves in the middle. And every once in a while, you see sneaky villagers being intercepted by those wolves, just like right now. So, Beastie's plan here was slowed down by the fact that there were some wolves out there. Recon, on the other hand, is doing an exceptional job killing the fishing eco of the Mista here. 
Yeah, he's doing a really good job of just being annoying. And uh, I, I feel like at this point, the best thing you could do as the mister is just pack up all your fishing ships and head right up to the north. Just go drop down another dock up here and then just start fishing up there. Because at the very least, that's going to re require your enemy recon to walk all the way up there. And, and you know, it's going to take time for him to do that. Three relics right now in for Vortex, but given the fact that there is still some to grab on the map, it's likely he's going to make a monastery. You already have free as well for the Muslim, and he's got the monastery up as well. Recon playing with a second town center, and the Muslim clearly slower to cast or Imperial compared to Vortex. I wonder if there was any kind of. Oh my goodness, the demolition ship. Oh, I didn't see the demo ship. What did it take out? Oh, or the longbow. Oh, seriously? Oh, don't yep. tell me that. Oh, no. How many longbows went down there? <laughs> That's going to be at least 10 longbows going down, right? Yeah, I would estimate like 12. I just barely caught the blast as well. But guess what? Vortex has explosives on those demolition ships now. So now they become very scary. And you see, this is the fast Imperial demolition ship play. Oh just my. before that top, I wanted to ask you if it was possible that Vortex got slunk to Imperial because his imp was so fast that even with fishing eco, you gotta wonder if there were some resources sent by Mista, for example. Yeah, he did put down a market. Uh, I, I noticed that market go up. Um, so I, I would suspect that is it. It is definitely... Uh, a sling that we've seen, but yeah, he's up to Imperial and they are just rushing these demo ships and these are fully upgraded demo ships As you mentioned these bad boys are you know, they, they are have got the explosive uh, Upgrade so he is gonna be looking at uh, taking down docks taking down infrastructure. What's the counterplay to this? Um, if you can't beat them join them I guess you see that <laughs> the Muslim is doing his best He's splitting up all of his fishing geeko and now he's that grabbing that demo as well but this is the problem. Even if you trigger the opponent's demo, the collateral damage is going to sink your fishing eco here. Look how much damage that does! It literally just one-shots his dock! That is ludicrous how much damage that does. Gosh, that is crazy. More demos just continuing to pile in, and so this is really the meta on this map. You just go fast Imperial into these crazy demos, and I, th I think this is probably the point where we've got to start asking the question, do demos- is that one-shotting? There's no way it just one-shot that dock. Did you see that? It looks like it does. It looks it like it... Just... It says it does 420 damage. And it just, <laughs> it just one-shots the dock. <laughs> is that... That's, that is... There's no way that's... That, that is 100% bugged. That's not intended. Yeah, there's no way. Like, demo ships would be already very powerful. But there has to be some sort of glitch with that because they're just ridiculously powerful. Surprisingly enough, Karax do pretty decently against them because they do have a long range, so they can snipe them before they get close. But obviously, Karax fires slowly, and you're just being flooded by those demolition ships. Those walls will be broken through in just a matter of seconds. Yeah, this is going to be pretty quick. Have a look at the economy that Vortex has got as well. He's sitting up on 5k gold at this point. Here comes the first demo ship. I want to see exactly how much damage... It does more than 2,000 damage! <laughs> oh my- Knock, knock! <laughs> it's the United States! <laughs> I can't. It's so funny, the demo ships are so busted! Okay, alright, alright, developers. We're gonna have to move that meeting forward from Tuesday at 10am. Move that bad boy up to Monday, 9am. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. Look how crazy- what are you- how do you even respond to that? Like, your enemy is just- Oh, that was a- that Wait! Was, yeah, did you see that? What happened there? Uh, it, I think it was because they were so far away from- I, I think it's based on proximity. It's something to do with proximity. It's got like different- uh, think of it like a, a shockwave. Uh, and so the closer that it is to the demo ship, um, the, the more damage. There's like rings that pop off around it. That's something that I noticed with the walls, is that it would sort of go like boof, 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 boof. Like one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you're standing right next to it, you're going to take all six waves. Uh, which, there, there you go. Yup. Demolition ships knocking down all of those docks at this point. Haven't really seen a lot of demos from the Muslim so far, but I guess that's because all of his dogs were already wiped out. <laughs> yeah, well, all right, guys, we, lo we lost water on this one, it seems. Uh, and so n now that they've won water, Vortex's team, from here, what do they do? What's, what's the goal? Oh, I think 
from this point on, you start thinking about playing this one slowly because you got the water control and that gives you like 60% map control advantage. And you can start focusing your efforts on the left side, maybe secure that sacred side because you are guaranteed to have the one in the middle. Right, okay, that, that's a pretty smart move. Um, and is, is there any sort of counter to these demo ships that you can think of, Lidicor? Because obviously there's a crossing up here towards the north. We can see that Beastie is frantically just trying to to wall it up with his villagers, but, uh, I mean, there's a demo ship just lying in wait, ready to go. Uh, is, is there anything that he can do to counter those? I think, like, here's the deal. Back before Springholds were nerfed, Springholds would have been a great tool because they have a long range, they can snap down ships, but now that they have been nerfed, their base damage is too low to snap them. You are seeing sometimes towers working out to a decent level because if you can get a lot of damage on them before they reach their target, you can just snap them down with how low HP they remain with. But obviously you need a lot of firepower. And the difficult thing is that their blast radius is so big that you need some very long range things to take them down. Like for example, a couple of clock tower bombards. That's a great point. Clock tower bombards are gonna be very strong against any potential uh, any potential demo ships. And uh, look, they, uh, they seem to be doing quite effectively against that. So they're going to be able to clear that one out. So Beastie going to be happy with the, the way that that has worked off. And now he's going to have to work on clearing the rest of the canal. Is that what you'd call it? I guess you could probably call it a canal, couldn't you? Yeah, it, it's technically a river, although it feels like a very underwhelming river. On the other side, though, by the time you clean up those demos, Vortex is coming in with fully upgraded elite man at arms. And on the left side, I see a lot of teal dots crossing the map. Those are Fire Lancers, soon to be elite. And the voice from Beastie... Oh, those are incomplete, so the Fire Lancers can march straight in. Mista also has a couple of forward positions over here with men at arms, spearmen. Some Lancers will respond to this one from the Muslim, but those Fire Lancers will have a free way into your base. Yeah, these Fire Lancers are going to be really concerning, because I, I guess the number one concern is obviously that they're going to take out landmarks, but the thing is that it's sort of a slow bleed with the Fire Lancers, in that they can just take out villager upon villager upon villager, now we're going to see them begin their first hits of the game coming in on these elite knights. The Muslim going to be taking uh, quite a punch there, but uh, unfortunately not critical mass reached yet for Lucifron and his Fire Lancers. Demolition ship still blasting their way through those walls, and that would let all those men at arms cross the river as well. Walls coming in right now for the Muslim. Currently their biggest problem is that they don't really have a ton of army on the battlefield. You see Recon still in Castle Age. And for Beastie, he was mostly focusing on his eco as well, so no Fire Lancers as of yet. Yeah, you can see that the Muslim struggling a little bit with the economy as well. He's got 105 villages at the moment, but just falling behind on the food count. And that's only going to get worse if these Fire Lancers do actually get behind lines, because it's going to mean that his economy just goes completely idle. We can see he's got a, uh, a little bit of, uh, of food economy around the main town center, but other than that, not a whole lot that is there. On the left side, we got the Fire Lancers clashing into Spearman. This is what I was referring to before. Recon in the previous rounds has done a masterful job holding off Fire Lancers with spears. The problem here for him is that he has English spears versus Abbasid Spearman supported by some men at arms. So it's going to be difficult to beat this combination of Fire Lancers and Abbasid infantry. Yeah, Fire Lancers now looking to get towards those bombards. They know that they, that is the, the money right there and uh, going to be putting out their siege damage on those clock tower bombards. 864 health goes absolutely nowhere. They just get melted, shredded completely. But at least there is a, a castle nearby to be able to apply a little bit of pressure and they do manage to clean that one up. Uh, we just saw Baoshuan being sunk on the water and now you see multiple castles on the shoreline trying to sink those ships. Now that I think about castles, the Red Palace is probably the best building that you can have to sink those ships because they have long range, a lot of firepower, but of course not having French over here means no Red Palace either. However, the Muslim is appearing on the battlefield with fully upgraded elite knights and the numbers are increasing, bombards are also crawling up to the left and that's the entire army production for the Mista that's wide open for destruction. Yeah, he's looking pretty good right now, the Muslim. He's got a lot of forces out, and keep in mind, he gets to maintain tempo as well. That is a big thing. The fact that he's got out this mass already, 22, means any subsequent fights that he has, he's going to be able to pick off those smaller numbers of units. Uh, and now that he's on the production, as you mentioned, it's going to make it very easy for him to begin slicing through that. So even though they've lost the water, they may potentially not have lost the game, but uh, Beastie 
getting a wall taken out there. I'm not sure if you caught that one, but uh, the demo ship doing absolute work on that shoreline. Even if you do try and wall yourself in, you're going to have difficulty uh, going up against these demo ships because they've just got so much flexibility. And take a look at the crossing, Litacore. Yup, the man at arms are coming in. Nest of bees. Uh, not really setting up so far. Those could help a lot against the man at arms. And now you got them set up, so. As long as the villagers are tanking the damage, you could have those nest of bees clean this up. There's also burning oil on those keeps. The bigger problem is the fire lancers crossing out there. So, despite Beastie's forces pushing the left side quite relentlessly, now the middle crossing is the concerning spot. Yeah, this is a really tough spot. You can see the that the, the first keep has actually gone down. The bombards on the back line from Vortex are working their way through. Going to begin hammering away at that and pushing down towards the base of Beastie. And this is the difficult spot because, as you mentioned, the Fire Lancers are going to be able to come through. We can see them slowly working their way towards that nest of bees, but that is not the, the main concern. The main concern are these villagers. Oh, my Lord, those villagers just look like they've been... I'm not even going to say it. It's just destruction. It's utter destruction right there. Knight's now coming in here from the Muslim. He's doing a great job trailing those Fire Lancers with his own knights right now. And in the middle, oh my goodness. I didn't see that demo blast. I just see the ending of it. <laughs> a bunch of dead yellow bodies. Oh Seeing gosh. that there were some Fire Lancers nearby, I assumed that they baited them to the shoreline and then just sunk them all. Still, the biggest problem right now is that we're just seeing so, so limited numbers from Beast's team when it comes to army. It's some knights from the Muslim, some spearmen from Recon, but their opponents just have a massive head start when it comes to army numbers and upgrades. Yeah. Uh, it's... It <laughs> I mentioned earlier with the Muslim, you know, he was in an advantageous position because he was able to... Uh, to, to have the l larger mass of units and it meant they were on top of the production so he would be able to take out any subsequent production but then it all goes to waste in a single demo ship doesn't it yep exactly there is also a Baoshuan sailing up the river there's actually two three of them those majestic ships moving up and those will take some nice shots on that white tower as well bring all the placements are coming in on those but those buildings will fall so fast to the cannon fire For yeah now, no, no, it's go, a bit go of a stalemate in the middle, but those Baoshuan will probably be able to break the stalemate. Yeah, it's not feeling good right now for uh, for Beastie QT and the Strel Borers. Uh, they're having a difficult time, and you can see the Fire Lancers making their way through. Line of sight in the middle uh, is still provided by those stone walls, and Beastie is able to spot those uh, those Fire Lancers coming through. He knows they're entering onto his side of the river. He just doesn't know exactly where they are. But uh, he's going to begin stonewalling up his trade line, and I definitely like this move from him. It's a smart move. It is indeed a clever move, and if the game goes very long, that trade could be very important. Of course, with so much mineable gold still left on the map, they are going to need to play a very long game here for that trade to be relevant. Some Fire Lancers do get through and they will be able to get some damage on the Fudik of the Muslim, which, by the way, is beautifully built up. Look at that, surrounding the Aachen Chapel. Yeah, wow, what a beautiful base. I gotta say, that is a screenshot right there if I've ever seen one. Ladies and gentlemen, get your print screens out. Look at that. Isn't that just... Wow. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen a more, a more beautiful base than I have right now. And the Muslim is able to take down the Baoshan with his keeps. Oh, look at this. The Muslim has three relics in that keep, and with that, his firepower is increasing and the weapon range is increased by 20%. I honestly didn't even know that you can increase the range of your castles with uh, the relics inside. Such a clever use of the relics here for the Muslim. He's got three in the Ragnitz Cathedral and three in that keep, and that is just helping so much holding off the push on the river. In fact, that might be the saving grace that helps against the demolition ships. Yeah, I've, I've never seen that before. That is very curious. I, I I always felt like that was just something, you know, that, that was like a bonus that no one ever just looked at. It was like, oh, they can, you know, they can put their relics in docks to increase the attack speed of boats. And it's like, great. Well, when do I ever have excess relics? Well, here you go. Team games. That's when you have excess relics. So, you know, you can pack them up in the in the uh, Regnitz Cathedral. And then when you're finished with them, throw them over in the, uh, in, in the keep. Because keep in mind, they still do provide that extra 100 gold a minute. Well, not that extra, but that, that uh, standard 100 gold a minute. Exactly. There's no point putting them into a monastery for the HR. I think we learned something very useful today because this is one of those things, as you said, that technically it's written in the tooltips, but no one ever reads that. No one ever uses that. Mist, on the other hand, going for a wonder. A wonder was rushed up as well by Beastie on the right side, but the Fire Lancers will slow that down quite considerably. Yeah, unfortunate for him. Those Fire Lancers could probably just thread, uh, shred through that wonder. 
uh, themselves. But yeah, it's going to be a wonder coming up. Uh, so just shy of 25 minutes is the first wonder. I'm going to see if I can spot it out. Uh, so it was, uh, it's a green wonder. We know that much. Can you see it, Lytical? There it is. I spot it. The prayer hall of Ukba. The wonder is up as well. For Beastie's team, there is still some Fire Lancers nearby. So now it comes down to whether or not Beastie's team can take down Mista's wonder. And this is where we have to highlight that Beastie's team was in a very similar position, I think two rounds ago, and they managed to finish off the opponent's wonder like 20 seconds left on the clock. So don't count out Beastie and the Straboras yet, as the demolition ships in the middle will sink a couple of knights. Yeah. And can we just... I, I just want to compliment right now Beastie's composition. He is 100% siege that is it. he's making nested bees he's making bombards and there he's making nothing else that's all he's got so i gotta say i absolutely love it uh i, I remember when uh when age of empires 4 hadn't yet come out and i think i was playing a game with uh it might have been casper and <laughs> i just went for full siege and it actually worked. And I'm like, well, I don't know if that's meant to work, but uh, I I'm suspecting Beastie probably watched that video. He's like, I'm going to copy that. Not really. But uh, this is this is the Chinese death ball. And I absolutely love it. I think it's an, a fantastic way to play China, especially in team games. Full siege. It is a smart move. No one can beat Chinese siege. Exactly. This is a lethal composition. If you have so many Holy Roman Empire Knights in yellow, Pyramid to ch brace against the charge of the Fire Lancers, and then if you also have a couple of siege weapons and not just bombards but also the nest of bees which will work really well if there's a meat shield in front of them because they'll just be able to decimate the infantry and even the fire lancers there's a demolition ship hiding there for vortex ready to drop on the siege weapons despite that castle being there for the muslim who is now spreading out the relics to multiple keeps actually yeah still pretty smart move the range it seems yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I think it's a smart move for him to do that. So it, it doesn't... I'm not sure if it actually stacks. I think it only provides the weapon range once. And so he's just moved them out into different uh, different keeps. So pretty smart move there from him. Yeah, that's like 500 IQ. Because especially in the middle of a tournament game, you don't have time to figure that out by yourself. It's like, <laughs> okay, what do I do? Um, Fire Lancers crossing the river, though. The most important thing here is that if you have them split into multiple keeps... That's going to guarantee that your opponents won't be able to break through there. Some more Baushan are moving up, but it looks like the Muslim will send all of his cavalry to the left side, oh. trying to take that wonder down, but the walls are there, so he's not going to be able to cross at all, unless he goes through these shallows here, but that's very risky for him. Oh, this is very, very risky. Oh, good luck to Muslim. Oh, you're playing with fire, my friend! You're playing with fire! Don't do it to him! No! To Muslim! Not like this! Oh my god. Why does he do it to us, Lydical? Why does he do it to us? Oh boy. I don't think that he saw those demolition ships, and neither did we. Oh, that battered force of knights is just going to be very sad. And I mean, in the middle, you already have the Mista with the stone walls up as well. Oh, this is looking really grim right now for Beastie's team. They're 30 seconds behind on the Relic Countdown. They are the ones that have to destroy that wonder. And look at the right side now. Stone walls are up for Beastie, but Mista managed to get some infantry through. And he's coming in with the battering rams, allowing the Fire Lancers to break in soon. Oh, no. It's a, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's just it's so terrible. What, what is it about the Chinese wall, or the, the the Great Wall of China, where it's like they they never broke through the Chinese the Great China, sorry the Great Wall of China. Uh, they just ran around it. But uh, it seems like the Abbasid Dynasty have taken a play out of another book because they've just said, well, we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna break through it this time. This wall just goes for absolute ever, doesn't it? Look at the gosh, man, this is huge. All right, looks like a couple of uh, of knights now broke their way through. Uh, going to be able to uh, slowly but steadily siege down these battering rams. Spears getting a nice uh, s a nice little slice. I don't even know what to call that, little cord. Have you got any idea what to call that? A uh, poke, maybe? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a poke, yes. Yeah, for now... It looks like the Wonders will stay safe for both. The biggest problem right now for Beastie's team is they are making no noticeable progress through the river. So, demo this, demo that. Even if that demo wasn't there, they would be bumping into stone walls with all those knights. So, they need something to break through those walls first. Yeah. Um, now, 
th there's not too much of a, a foothold that's actually been placed over here. It looks like he just had some infantry that was hanging out over here. I can't see any transports up towards the north, so I don't suspect that's going to be a a long attack that's going to be happening over here. It looks like it was sort of just a once off and I suspect once these battering ramps are taken down, that'll be pretty much all she wrote for this attack up here towards the north, at least until a transport or two gets made. Exactly. Looks like this ramp push is going to get cleaned up. Fire Lancers will be cleaned up as well. Looks like the Muslim is regrouping with his knights, though. He's moving to the left side once again. Oh, no. Those keeps now with the extra range are taking down all those demolition ships. So, really, this is the answer to these demos here. Those demos popping off, barely doing any damage to the keeps. And if you got the extra range going, those will work very nicely. Although, that keep on the left side is going to be taken down. Oh, jeez. Oh. Does a lot of damage, but uh, manages to keep it alive. Uh, I feel like th there's a, a small little window he's got where he can just rush over 10 villages and t uh, repair it. But my, my fear is that a demo would just come in and kill all the villages. But look at the far left. Here comes Beastie Cutie and he's about to blast through the first layer of walls. Second layer also going to get taken down. That's a lot of stuff to destroy. And if you look at the middle, the forces of Vortex will have to be pulled all the way back to the left side. That's going to take some time until the infantry comes to the left side of the map. Yeah, and they are really going safe with this one as well. They don't want to muck around. They don't want to play around with any of those demo ships. Um, and uh, slowly but steadily, those forces are going to be coming across. But you can see that... Uh, that Lucifron is definitely scrambling to try and get these walls and these towers up uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, now it looks like we've <laughs> he's managed to get through he's through to the final layer, at least the final layer for now. Uh, because <laughs> one of the things that you do commonly see is players just walling out the wazoo. <laughs> Did you see those two spears? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> they had the worst day of their life. That's oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that was uh, now that was not good. Yeah, it looks like this is gonna be the make or break hold for Vortex's team. They do have their bombard set up as well. Some Fire Lancers are on the field. Big horde of Spearmen also in for Mistus forces. And those Abbasid Spearmen should be able to do quite well against the Yellow Knights. But with so many Nest of Beasts coming in as well, I have no idea who has the edge in this one. Well, look at but Vortex's base defense towers. that he's got set up. Look at this. He's got so many of these outposts set up, ready to go. We're gonna count these. Hold on a second. Give me a sec. What do we got here? 27 outposts coming up right now for Vortex. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. <laughs> yep, and all of those are Bombard Towers. They have cannon emplacements on them. Most of them are being fortified as we speak. So it's gonna be a little a bit of a time to break through them. Meanwhile, the Muslim is gonna clean up the stable. That's a bit of a nice touch here, making sure the Fire Lancers can't just mass up and charge their right side. They still have seven minutes to go to destroy the opponent's wonder. In the middle, everything is peaceful now, so everything is gonna come down to that left side. Yeah, and one of the, the key differences here, in my opinion, is that the Fire Lancers for Lucifron are quite large, and, and it, it, they're going to be what either make it or break it. So there's plenty of Bombards out for Lucifron, uh, but he's got no Nest of Beasts, whereas Beastie has got a huge amount of Nest of Beasts. And one of the things about Nest of Beasts, once they reach a critical mass, there's nothing that can stop them. When, they, when it comes to coming up close to them. So you could bring, you know, infinite amounts of those uh, of those Fire Lancers, but the Nest of Bees are always going to just be able to take them out. Now the Bombards begin taking it out. We'll enter into the cinematic mode as the Fire Lancers look to try and take out on the left-hand flank all those Royal Knights. The Bombards on the back line going to be doing their best as we witness one of the greatest battles in Age of Empires 4. Bombards firing off Nest of Bees, trying their hardest. The Fire Lancers breaking through onto the back line. All those Bombards are going down. Nest of Bees doing Doing a great job and we see an overwhelming victory coming out now for our team in the north it looks like they have completely destroyed this attack litical the forces of recon's team were just not in sync with each other you could see that the spearmen were a little late to the party and you could fight the fire lancers with the knights if the red spearmen were able to help that could have been a completely different fight and the spring Olds of mista were doing so much work those Abbasid Spring Lords, he had like 10 of them. And part of the reason why that Siege wasn't able to do much is because they were sniped down by the Spring Lords. Now, this is going to be very difficult for Beastie's team to push because Mista's team is still leading with the Wonders by 30 seconds. And as things stand, that push on the left side stalls out completely. In the middle, there is absolutely nothing coming through. I feel like Beastie's team may have just lost their final momentum in this game. 
I think you might be 100% right. It looks incredibly difficult from this point. How, how do they even get through this? I mean, there's just so many towers out for them now. It, it's a huge amount of units that are back defending here. And as you pointed out in the early game, the likely unit that you expected that would come out from the Abyssinian Dynasty was going to be those spears. And we have got just plenty of them out on the field. Mister currently sitting with 84 elite spearmen. But there is the next wave coming in. The Muslim is not giving up, and I think he's now going for the snipe. Their time is running low. There is some demolition ships crawling up, though. The Muslim now pushing up because it looks like Vortex has kind of given up on the demolition ship approach, and that's a lot of demos crawling up the river from both Recon and the Muslim. They want to blast through those walls with demos, the cannon, and then push up with the knights. But if the Wonder is walled in, it's going to be impossible to snipe it with just the knights. <laughs> I just, I, I basically just went from the wonder all the way to the, uh, to where the army is at the moment, and it's a long way, Lytical. I'm gonna be real with you. It is a very long way. Four minutes remaining. As you see, now the demos will trade off against each other. One layer down, there is at least two more layers, a bunch of castles, fire lancers, met arms in the way. This is the final charge of the Muslims team. They either take that water down and win the game, or they're going to lose this one. There is no other options at this point. So wh what do you even do at this point? I'm thinking like you try and rush through, but the issue is you've got bombards that are going to have to take down the stone wall because that thing's fully walled in. You can't get units behind there to siege yep. that down. So you have to get bombards up there. And it's a far way away, all the way back there. This is the biggest problem indeed, that you can't just run and snipe. That's why it's so good idea to just stonewall that in but that's a lot of knights to work with i think the biggest thing that you need for recon though is some forward buildings because he needs to reinforce that battle a little faster you don't have time to wait for the infantry to arrive on the battlefield men at arms are in there here for him though and those will be extremely tanky cannon fire opening up on the castles and now you see lucifer's team is pulling back a tiny bit yeah there's a lot of units in here though litical gonna enter into the cinematic mode once again as we begin to witness the greatest fight history has ever known as the Royal Knights, look at the massive Royal Knights that are out right now. At this point in time, it is ridiculous. They're just looping around. There's so many of them. The Springwoods are having a difficult time getting on top of the Bombards because of their own wall. You've got to delete that wall to get through. And unfortunately, Mister having a bit of a tough time, but it looks like another cleanup may be in order on aisle number four, Lytical, because the Spearmen are just overwhelming completely the units that are all here. I think this might just be a good game right now. It's very likely because those purple men in terms are still in good numbers and don't underestimate them against knights. Having that plus six damage versus heavy units is just spectacular. And you see Beastie is indeed tapping out. The problem here was that it was basically two and a half versus three. Recon didn't have the forces in large numbers in the middle simply because he had to walk all the way through the map to reinforce. And with that, faster wonder for the team of Lucifron and they take game number two as well. What a game. So not a bad game at all. That was quite enjoyable. And I got to say, uh, we, we need to move that meeting forward that we discuss the uh, <laughs> the demo ships. Bring that... For, we, th that is just ludicrous. Those things absolutely fuck. Like, wow. That is crazy. They're so, so strong. You can see how pivotal they were throughout that game. But a beautiful defense there uh, from Vortex, from Lucifron, and from the Mister. Absolutely. Like, the key thing from them was that they had multiple layer stone walls. So... While obviously the demolition ships contributed a lot to their victory, part of the reason why they were able to win this is because there was no way for the opponents to run in and snipe those wonders. The tower defense on the left side, and even just the stone walls in the middle. So the Muslim tried to cross the river with like 50 lancers, but they would have just bombed into stone walls anyways. Obviously, had he not lost all of those, there could have been a better chance to take the fight on the left side. But ultimately, it's, it comes down to military numbers, and if you see what the Mista did with his villager count, he basically started deleting villagers at some point. By the end of the game, he went down to 33 villagers, just so that he can fit in all that army and make <laughs> sure that the opponents can't get to the wonder. Yeah, really smart move from him. Yeah, you can see spikes on the military count as well. Very smart play from the Mister. All right, well, if you're watching this one on YouTube, make sure you check out Lytical. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, for all you guys watching on Twitch, make sure you stay tuned because there is plenty more action coming up. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.